Okay, if you can't scale Facebook ads, if you're stuck at a certain revenue or a certain spin right now, then you need to check this video out. I'm gonna be going over exactly what I see commonly or the most commonly between my students, between my clients, between people I consult with, where they're stuck at a certain revenue level or spin goal and what exactly you can do. So let's dive into it. Let's go over a couple of things. You know, if you've been watching the channel long enough, the number one being not testing enough creatives. This is easily one of the just, I would say like lowest tier things you could be doing to drastically improve performance, which is consistently testing new creatives. This particular account right here, I started at like, I want to say the second creative right here. And it was like a, you know, $4 cost per lead. And then like I launched this video right here and did like a $2 cost per lead. Not, not like the best, but not the worst. And then I launched this third video and you know, dollar 62 cost per lead with 322 leads right there. So we're able to cut down cost per lead. Same thing with cost per acquisition, cost per webinar sign up, whatever you're optimizing for. Same thing, you know, you keep testing new creatives and finding new ones that scale. Now, you also need to be being smart about this. Every single creative you test needs to be backed by a marketing hypothesis, which comes from research. Then you need to go build the creative out and then go and upload to your account. This is another example right here. This particular account, uh, one of our clients, we spent $235,000 last month. It's a higher ticket product. So it's about $554 cost per purchase, but again, it's a higher ticket product. Uh, we've tested over 307 creatives for this account in the last 12 months, just for like an example right there, just for an account that we've been running for a long time to show you more of how seriously we're testing new creatives. You need a system, you need to be you know, filming new creatives every single week and putting them into your account. Now, next thing is you're not testing enough fresh content. Um, I see this all the time where like literally they're just taking the same fucking creative and just like putting a new hook on it every single week. And I'm like, you deserve the shitty results that you have in your account right now because you are putting zero effort in to going a step further and creating something people want to see. You need to be filming fresh new content. 95% of the creatives we put in our accounts for like our clients, we shoot for completely fresh content. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, it costs money. Yes, it's you know tedious, it takes time. But these are the things that we're willing to do to go a step further than everyone else to be able to create results like this in the last month, for example, spending $235,000. So that's one of the biggest things right there. You need fresh content. I make this, I make this example all the time with my students. It's like, if I uploaded the exact same YouTube video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, exact same video and just changed the title, do you think this channel would grow? No, not at all. I have a few different content bins of things I'll pull from, but I'm always having new titles and fresh new videos just different twist on every video. And that's what you need to be doing. Always need to be filming fresh new things going to the account. Don't be a lazy fuck and keep testing the same fucking hook over and over and over and over. Because that's why your performance isn't shit. And I, I'm calling you guys out because I see it all the time in my students uh, when they come on board. And I see it all the time when I'm on consulting calls with clients. And they're like, well, Nick, I've been testing a lot of new creatives. It's like, no, you're not. You're posting the same fucking YouTube video three times a week and you're just changing the title. That's why you have shitty performance. It's not entertaining. It's not educating. It's not anything. It's just the same thing over and over and over. No one wants that. Limit yourself to two iterations per creative. If you go film a new video, you're only allowed to go make that video one more time with a different twist on it. That way you're constantly pushing yourself to consistently film new things, new fresh things. And yes, it's expensive. I've called this out already. But the more you invest into the creative, the higher potential ROI you're going to get. The creatives that we spend a lot of time, a little bit of money on, those are the creatives that have been able to spend multiple six figures. But the same content everyone else is ripping on AliExpress and you're expecting that same photo to work again for you, no shit it's not going to work because everyone else has ripped the same photo. That's not going to do anything. Maybe get you a little bit of spin, a little bit of results, and then guess what? You're in the comments, Nick, I got two purchases. and it Now all this, the results stuff, well, no shit. You've been using the same thing over and over and over. Now, Next one, frequency is too high on your top spending creative. So here's one of our accounts right now. 
I just have the one campaign that we use for this particular account. And I just have basically all of our creatives right here over the last seven days. And I sort it by amount spent. You can see right here, 110 has spent $16,000 over the last seven days. It's a $37 cost per acquisition, cost per purchase. The frequency does 1.73. Now, in this scenario right here, if we want to go spend more, we'd be very limited. Why? Because that frequency is almost a 2x. I find when frequency on your highest spending creative on a seven day window, again, last seven days, highest spending ad, and looking at the frequency, once it starts going to that 1.5 to 2x, I typically see cost per acquisition rise and ROAS drop. Now, what do you need to do in this scenario? Do you need to turn off ads? Fuck no. Leave all the ads on and you need to go find new ads that appeal to a larger audience that become new winners. Couple different examples. Number one, you're doing everything correctly, but the creative is boring. I made this example already. It's like if I had the world's strongest iPhone case and I took a picture of it and I just put world's strongest iPhone case and upload to Facebook, it wouldn't do that great. Why? There's real no reason to watch this ad. I would only click on it if I'm looking for like a potentially a, a case for my phone that's strong, but it just, it wouldn't be great. It wouldn't really be share worthy, engagement worthy, all that good things. But if I dropped the iPhone in the case, world's strongest iPhone case from a hundred foot building, then picked up the phone and showed how it still worked perfectly fine and made a 10 second video out of it, that would crush. It would get a lot of likes, comments, shares. It also proves the claim that I'm making of it being very strong. And that right there would crush, resonate with a lot of people, get a lot of exposure, and would have a much lower frequency. The only thing we did there was we took the extra step to really put the effort into making something entertaining, engaging, and resonate with a large group of people. Next one is you need a better desire. Depending on the desire you go after in the marketplace, some are a lot smaller, some are a lot larger. That's gonna play an effect right there. You know, maybe a new stage of market awareness. We had one client where we, we focused on problem aware market awareness for about six months, and we were stuck at like five to 10K a day in ad spend. Then we finally switched to an unaware market, and that allows us to go from up to about five, 10K a day. It's about 15K per day in ad spend, and it lowered cost per lead significantly for this particular client. So if you've been in the same stage of market awareness for a couple months, you've tested hundreds of ads, and you haven't tried other stages of awareness, that's where I would go up or down, just kind of depending on the scenario. Next one is you have the wrong level of market sophistication. You're talking to your market like they've never heard of this product before, where in reality is they all use this product and you just need to simply showcase how you have the best product in the marketplace. Example, the world's strongest phone case, the little example of scenario I made. So you may need to change the level of market sophistication you're also approaching because you may be undermining them of where exactly they're at. And then last thing of why you can't scale your Facebook ads because you either have a low margin, low AOV, or your retention. So AOV, margin, and retention. So this is a cool little sheet I have right here. You know, type in some of your stuff. So this example right here is from one of our clients. We have about a $70 AOV, about a $20 between cost of goods and shipping and handling. I just, I didn't break them apart for this scenario. So we have a 71% gross margin. If you have a lower than 70% gross margin, I find it's very difficult to scale. I've seen people come to me with literally like a $60 cost of goods and shipping in a $7 AOV. I'm like, you have 14% margin. You would literally need a $2 cost per acquisition to scale your account. And they're like, yeah, Nick, how do I get a 7X ROAS? I'm like, you don't need a fucking 7X ROAS. You need to go fix your business, not your Facebook ads. So, you know, this scenario right here, we'll leave it like this, 70%, you know, and you can, you can go higher, right? Like, let's just say, for example, you could sell a $70 product and it only has $10 of cost per cost for goods and shipping and handling, and you have an 86% margin. A lot of supplement brands, beauty brands and stuff, they typically have this higher margin around there above 70%. And you literally just need a 1.17 to break even. So like we have $60, we can up to $60 we can spend to acquire a customer. So this is like a really good example right here. Now I'm gonna put it more back closer to what's realistic right there. If we look in this example right here, we spend $30,000, a 3.2X, a new customer acquisition, you know, do about 96K, 38K in profit for month one. And then if we look at it, well, look at our LTV over three months. It goes from 38,000 to 67,000. So it increases in value about 30, $30,000. And that's because we have a solid retention. Our LTV over three months is $100. There's a lot of people I talk to where, you know, their AOV and their LTV is the same because they have not done the work to improve their business. 
They haven't launched other new products for their existing customers. And it's like, well, Nick, I, I tried launching a new product for my existing customers and it didn't work. Then I'm like, okay, let's take a step back here. Are people happy with your product you're shipping them, the first product? It's like, well, a lot of people complain. They give refunds, the product breaks. So no, I'm like, do they have a reason to purchase from you now? It's like, well, no. So you need to go fix your first time purchase experience first. Then it's like, cool, that is solid. You're doing an amazing job right there. Now let's look at the next aspect. Did it take four weeks for their product to get to them? Well, yeah. Well, it's like, well, I wouldn't want to purchase from you either. You know, people expect a seven to 10 day shipping time. That's pretty standard now for the industry. That's, you know, 10 days is even technically long. If you look at Amazon Prime now, which is about two to three days. So you got to look at fixing that first time customer experience. It's like you get all that nailed down, then cool. Run surveys to your existing customers. Hey, what do you want to see next? What are other problems you struggle with? What are some other products you would like to see? Run surveys to those customers through email, SMS, and figure out what they want. That's it. They will literally tell you what they want. The reason why I created my course and the why I created my inner circle, but two of my coaching programs, because literally people were telling me in the comments to create it. And guess what? It opened up a phenomenal additional revenue stream to my agency for my business. And that was great. All I did was listen to my customers. I didn't fight with them. I didn't argue with them. I didn't try to be like, oh, you don't know what you want. I let them tell me. Then I put it together. Then I launched it and it crushed. Same thing with your business. Survey your customers. You can use Klaviyo, which is email marketing, just to email your existing customers and just simply ask them what they want. You can use things like JotForm, for example, for them to fill out different ideas. And now you have a list of ideas that you can then go put in production and launch. And you will have to test a couple different products. It's not just gonna be the first product you launch your existing customers is gonna crush. You may have to test a few different ones in order to finally find one that works for your customers. And you wanna keep doing that over and over and over to your the next Apple, for example, where you have a variety of products that people can stake with, they come in, they can purchase a variety of different things from you. You also have new ones being released every year to where, you know, they keep wanting to purchase the next best one. That's what iPhone did. Again, yeah, there's other products like MacBook, Mac, iPad, iPods, AirPods, AirPod Maxes. There's a variety of different products they can purchase and they love it all because the experience is really amazing. So that's another thing. Raise your LTV, get more, and that's going to improve your profit month over month where you can spend more because then you can lower your standards for what you need to scale at. That's another one. Lastly is improve your AOV. So, you know, let's just say we got this up to like, I don't know, 80 or $90 and we only improved this by like $25 right there. Then it's like, boom, you know, we just added an extra couple thousand dollars in profit. This would have to be fixed though. But another thing, just AOV, for example, improve that upsells, you can start with something simple, frequently bought together on the product page. You can do that. After you take people to the cart, you can have gifts for certain levels of spin in the uh, cart right there. That's another really phenomenal way. And then lastly is Zipify one click upsell where after they check out, after they purchase or anything like that, you can have a few different additional upsells that people can take. And that's another really route, good route to go right there. So that's another thing we recommend. So improve your margin, AOV and retention. That's to make more profits on a monthly basis where you can spend more. You can afford a little bit lower of a ROAS, but you can spend more and you can make more profits on a monthly basis. So these are the main things that we address in my agency with my mentoring, my students. And I really hope this helped you guys out. Make sure you hit the like button, hit that subscribe button for new videos, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And uh, if you want me to run your Facebook ads, Click link below. We specifically work with brands doing 100 to 250K a month and we help them scale to multiple seven figures per month in revenue. Or I got my mentoring program, which is ideally for people doing 30K plus a month. And uh, that's monthly mentoring with me, handhold you through the process, help you scale your business. And then lastly, I have my Facebook ads course, which is ideally for people between zero to 10K a month who wanna learn all the advanced marketing fundamentals, systems, and like that, things we use. And all those links can be found below. Talk to you guys later. Have a great rest of your day. Peace out.